Hello, I'm back from my trip to Nepal now and I thought I'd just do a little sum up of how my travel art kit worked and show you a couple of other snippets of sketches that I did while I was out there. I didn't get as much drawing or painting done as I thought I might, but overall it was more of a, an extreme experience <laughs> than I'd anticipated. We were hiking with guides and so you kind of have to keep to the pace of the group. You can't just keep stopping off and doing a sketch here and there when you fancy. And also the temperatures are quite extreme, so you can't always uh, sit still for very long outdoors or even just sit in your room at night doing some drawing because there's no heating other than in one room in each tea house. And that tends to just be a, a good fun social room where you want to hang out with other people. So first of all, my kit. I have to say I'm super happy with how it worked out and what I took. As you can see, the bag itself is still in great condition and I just, I throw this in my uh, day pack every day. It just got squashed in the bottom with all sorts of rubbish. So that worked out really well. And then the front flap, I had this kind of reusable um, kitchen towel. Uh, that worked really well. Uh, my, my paint kit itself, obviously I've got quite a few colours in there and I didn't really feel like I was short on any colours. I was really glad to have a couple of the convenience greens and browns. I used undersea green a lot, I used verdita a lot. Leaf green came in very handy and the chromite brown from A Gallo is great. Dark Forest as well, and Payne's Grey. They were probably my most commonly used uh, colours. And then this was the small equipment pocket, which I've not even emptied out from the trip yet. Uh, I used the clips on a couple of occasions. Um, they were fine. Rubber and the washi tape got used and then oh, you can see <laughs> I just kept the shavings and the pencil sharpener in a bag and when I needed to sharpen a pencil I just put the whole thing in the bag um, use it like that I never even take the sharpener out or get the shavings anywhere so that was good so in, in this outside pocket, <laughs> excuse me, I've come back with a, um, a chest infection. Um, so my luminance pencils, I think I used all of those colours. I used my scroll box uh, for softer sketches and I used my um, Pentel 0.5mm pencil. Uh, for more uh, gentle outline sketches. Uh, the Uniball Air it was great. I use that for everything. I use that for my day-to-day day, day -day writing and keeping a diary. Plus, I used it for a couple of outlines on sketches. Uh, the White Posca pen. Yeah, I used that for a couple of details. And then my two paint brushes were great. I, I used both of those. So I've got the Escoda Ultimo 10, just for the, the broader washers. And then the um, Silver Black Velvet number no. six uh, travel brush. So yeah, again, I was happy with all of those things. There weren't any real things that I was wishing I'd bought extra, maybe a couple of extra colors. Um, of luminance pencils I could have done with but overall I was really I was really happy with those and I found the layout of the bag really handy just to be able to chuck little things in this pocket here and zip it up and then with my paint wedged at the bottom and my um, tissue there that was great 
and then the main compartment held my sketch pad, my water container, and the Caran d'Ache Neo Colour twos. Um, this water pot worked really, really well. I was really happy with it, and actually the lid ended up being super useful because I could get rid of my my water. And sometimes I only used a tiny bit of water, so I only um, half extended the cup and used it like that. But then rather than having like the wet everywhere, the lid just sealed it all in and I could just chuck it straight in my case. And my, my sketch pad never got wet or anything like that. I, just looking at the Neo Colour 2s, I actually use most of these colours, um, maybe the brown slightly less, but yeah, they did they did all get used actually. Again, it would have been nice to have a few more colours, but these were the ones that I knew from practising beforehand and were the ones I'd use most commonly in landscapes. Um, and then my sketchbook, as I said, I didn't get as many done as, as would have been nice to do but I'll just show you quickly the ones that I've got in here and I took video snaps of me doing some of these so I'll intersperse those bits of video with me showing it you now um, and it's yeah the case protected it pretty well it's still it's still in quite nice condition so these were the materials that I took with me that I swatched out beforehand. i show that in an earlier video. Um, so this is just a very quick one I did um, out of the aeroplane window on the first flight that we went on flying over Europe. After we'd been in Kathmandu for a night, we had to get um, a four hour minibus ride through the mountains to the small airport, which would take us to Lukla Airport. It was just around dawn and this is the moon setting and we stopped off by a river just to stretch our legs and go over, go over a little um, a rope bridge that was next to the, the main traffic bridge. So I took the photo at the time and then once we arrived at the airport, this is the picture that I'd, I'd uh, picked out to paint. We ended up being about eight hours delayed at that airport and it felt like every time I took my painting out, and I just got some paint down on it. There was like a false alarm that we had to go, so I kept like, yeah, <laughs> I, I kept having to close my sketchbook before before it was properly dry. Um, so that yeah, that was a very uh, quick and bitty painting. <laughs> After four days of hiking, I realised that I wasn't going to be able to carry on to Everest Base Camp. I'd had a cortisone hip injection the week before we left, and my hip still wasn't um, cooperating very well. So I decided to stay in the town of Namche Bazaar for a week while the rest of my party went on to Everest Base Camp. So the morning they left, I had to transfer to another hotel and I, this was me just sitting on the sun lounge, uh, on the sun terrace, doing more of an urban sketch style of the view. 
So I'm sitting in the sun waiting for my new hotel room and um, to be prepared. And I just thought I'd sketch the view from where I am at the moment. This is my new hotel. The rest of my party have carried on now. Which I'm half sad about and half happy to start exploring this place a bit more on my own. And then I actually have a video of me doing this painting. I hiked up to a place called Sagamartha next and I just sat painting in a field overlooking the mountains. And then I have a I have a video for this uh, this next picture as well. This was in the mountains above Namche Bazaar and as I said, I'm not I'm not exactly blown away by <laughs> the art that I've done on this trip, but I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed myself at least at least having a go at these things. And then this was just again, this was from the Sun Terrace outside the hotel. It was too cold to stay inside the hotel during the day and there's no heating. And we were lucky that it was sunny outside, so it was it was warmer to sit out on the sun terrace. And this is just a couple of buildings that I could see from the sun terrace with the mountains behind. And then on our last day, after we'd flown back to, back from Lukla to Kathmandu, we had a couple of days to explore Kathmandu, and this is the Garden of Dreams in Kathmandu, just a photo that I'd taken from there. And I started painting this while I was in Doha Airport in Qatar uh, on our transfer back. And I definitely want to have a go at painting uh, this photograph again. I think the colours and everything in the photograph are lovely and I haven't really done justice to them here, but I will, I want to persevere with that picture. So that's actually all the paintings that I did while I was out there. I think I showed this little book that I bought uh, briefly in one of my videos. This is made from um, lock to paper, which is um, a Nepalese plant. And most of the kind of craft books and things that you see uh, are made of locked up paper. And I don't think it's got sizing on it. It's really hard to work with with watercolour. So I just use this as a kind of a fun, quick, scruffy sketchbook. Um, so yeah, I was, I was just doodling and doodling these first couple of pages. Uh, that's yeah, one of the views from the mountains. The paint washers uh, didn't turn out great on their own at all. Uh, so I went over the top with a pencil and Neocolor 2s on this page and it, it turned out a bit better then. And you can see how much the, the, water, the watercolor bleeds through onto the next page. And then while I was sitting on the sun terrace, I could see quite a few crows flying around Namche Bazaar. And so I just looked at a few crow silhouettes and sketched those in and painted around there. 
And then the last picture I've got is, um, there are some beautiful paintings around doorways and in the structures that contain the prayer wheels. And this was just, this was just one of the illustrations that I took a photo of and just enjoyed copying it out. And so, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's all I got done on my trip. But I have a wealth of photos now and ideas and materials that I want to paint over the coming days and weeks. So I hope that was of some interest to you. I'm going to do another video coming up, which is just lots of snippets of video, which shows more of my travels unrelated to art stuff which show Nepalese life a little bit more and the contrast between the mountains and the city of Kathmandu. Thanks ever so much for watching. Bye.